The Game Awards honored this year's greatest video games to hit the market, many of which were highly anticipated from fans and would go on to deliver exactly what people were looking for. But why isn't Starfield in this lineup? It was one of the most hyped games of all time, but yet if there was a category for most disappointing game of the year, it would surely be in contention. And this is confusing, as there's a scope to this game that is matched by few out there. Starfield certainly gets a lot right, so what made 40% of all reviews on Steam negative? There has to be more to it than it's just boring or empty, and that's what we're here to figure out. Welcome to Figuring Out Fantasy, where we'll be taking a look at just where Starfield went wrong and what features, or lack thereof, caused it to be received so poorly. In the years leading up to the release of Starfield, there were few games that demanded such attention and anticipation. It was Bethesda's first new intellectual property in 25 years, so of course with such legendary series as Skyrim and Fallout in their arsenal, fans were going to feel like the next big leap for this game studio was going to be within Starfield. With a steep 5-year waiting period since its initial announcement, this game had all the time in the world to be hyped up by excited fans, a huge factor which I believe worked as a detriment to its eventual release rather than a benefit. It was forced to compete with one of the most toxic factors when it comes to the release of a new title, expectations. Now this isn't a short way of saying that the game wasn't received well solely because of a lack of meeting unrealistic expectations. That would be short-sighted as to what the game actually fails to provide the player. I do feel though that many of those criticizing Starfield fail to provide examples from the game's core formula in a manner that's productive to improving on titles going forward. What do I mean by this? FUCKING PRONOUNS! Critiques like inclusion of pronouns in character creation or the distaste for the maintenance of survival mechanics just sound a bit hollow when trying to constructively analyze the game's most impactful faults. If you had to pick one aspect of Bethesda games that set them apart from others in the genre, what would it be? Well, if classics like Skyrim or Fallout 3 are concerned, it's the density of the RPG content you'll find around seemingly every corner. Beyond just NPCs to interact with, it felt like the fantasy world of Skyrim and the post-apocalyptic wastelands of Fallout 3 had a new and flavorful destination for you to aim towards no matter what point in the game you were at. But when it comes to Starfield, I don't think the same can really be said. There is some truly quality content to experience within the seemingly infinite scope of this game, but that's not quite the issue. There are certainly plenty of thrilling experiences to have, but it's how the player is expected to approach these experiences in which the issue lies. As I mentioned, Skyrim and Fallout are great comparisons to show just how effective surrounding the character with approachable opportunities is. Especially Fallout, given that it is supposed to be a barren wasteland of survivors, yet is jam-packed with countless choices towards forging your own personal gaming experience. Starfield, though, seems to stray from that idea of almost overwhelming the player with things they feel like they can go do and accomplish, in pursuit to steer more towards the goal of portraying depth in the true concept of infinite space. This, in turn, led to Starfield breaking the 40-second rule. What exactly is the 40-second rule? Well, let's bring up another classic example which is the conception of this open-world standard in the first place, The Witcher 3. A member of the team who worked on the living world design for The Witcher 3 spoke out about this world-building strategy, saying, We did some tests and found that the player is focused on the stuff which we produce. Every 40 seconds, they should see something and focus on it like a pack of deer or some opponents, some NPCs wandering about, so we have our rule of 40 seconds. Now The Witcher 3 didn't invent this optimization, as we can go back and identify just how important this focus on density can be within your RPG's open world. Some tests within Skyrim and Fallout gave results of anywhere from 35 to 45 seconds between each point of interest no matter how big or small. And even an example like Rockstar's Red Dead Redemption 2, where the emphasis is on a more ambitious world size, Points of interest typically have a travel time between them of around 80 seconds. Surely longer than 40 seconds, but all while being accompanied by stunning visuals and jaw-dropping landscapes to compensate. Now what is the typical travel time between points of interest within Starfield? Anywhere from 2 to 5 minutes. Now 2 to 5 minutes is certainly a varying range, but for the most optimistic interpretation of these results to be a travel time of 2 minutes, there isn't much to be encouraged by in seeking out that next landmark. This is essentially flipped on its head though once you enter a city, as it won't take you more than 10 or 20 seconds to find a new opportunity to fulfill a quest or make use of your spoils. Though this is almost a tease as once you leave these civilizations, it's solely on you as the player to source your excitement for what's ahead. But Starfield is a space game. It's supposed to be expansive and tries to immerse you in that experience. Why would we be criticizing its breaking of this rule if it shouldn't apply to games like this? And this is probably the most confusing aspect to debate when it comes to Starfield and comparing it to other games like it. It's a Bethesda game at its core, with expansive character customization and seemingly endless RPG elements. 
but ends up being compared to games like No Man's Sky at the end of the day. Where No Man's Sky feels expressive and limitless when it comes to how any given consumer can enjoy the journey present, Starfield feels clunky and lacks a sense of flow. No Man's Sky is brought up as a preferred title for many people because it succeeds in being what the setting demands it to be. A space game with spaceships, space creatures, and space... space. Starfield is bashed a lot of the time because it breaks rule after rule of classic Bethesda titles in its RPG and point of interest aspects, but yet doesn't even feel like it approaches the scale of space that games like No Man's Sky can offer, no matter how much procedural generation it boasts. This game aims to be a universe begging for exploring, while clinging on to the aspects of the game studio's previously successful titles without remembering their most effective strategies in the first place. All of these elements added up results in a game that feels like it has no real direction. There is an incredible amount of detail in so many areas of this game, but almost none of it is able to be realized unless you're capable of fully immersing yourself in that world. But the way this game attempts to immerse you in its universe is directly counterintuitive to what it aims to achieve on the RPG side of things. That isn't to say that the RPG elements in this game don't feel present, they certainly do with countless amounts of side quests which feel like they never quite end, even when you're done with the primary content. But is that truly the standard for what we desire out of any new RPG on the market? There's content to enjoy, but could it be possible that they overestimated the staying power of their RPG content in the pursuit of the sheer size of their game? It does seem to be the trend these days to just boast how big your game can be. 100 different planets, 1000 different planets, infinite planets. Nobody cares. Just give me a few really good planets if you're going to spread the thousands so thin. It feels extremely difficult to pull off an experience where the emphasis is on your created character and their part in the story all while it's meant to exist within a procedurally generated universe. That design choice is in direct conflict with what the blueprint of this game aims to achieve. I believe that Bethesda needed to make a choice before they dove into this project. They saw the missed opportunities with No Man's Sky and likely felt like it was an area their budget could capitalize on. But on the other side of that same coin, they were still responsible for upholding the RPG elements present within previous successful titles like Skyrim and Fallout. If this game didn't receive the hype train that it did in combination with the game studio it was being released by, I don't doubt that it would have had its fair share of appreciation by fans across the market without nearly the amount of backlash. Sure, the content within would be met with criticism, but that criticism wouldn't be backed with an element of unfulfilled promises. If Bethesda's main goal in game development was to provide the true scope of space, why is something like the spaceship content so shallow? But on the same token, if you want to say that it's a Bethesda game and that the true experience was always within the RPG content, you can't even have that as there's almost nothing to get excited about when it comes to immersion in that category. Especially when interactions like these are put side by side and you realize how important attention to detail truly is. I need to ask you to stop. That shouting is making people nervous. Hey, it seems more and more obvious with each passing day that too many elements that are tried and true to Bethesda games are missing from Starfield, all while not committing to the depth of space content necessary to potently get across what they're aiming for. And they may need to take things back to square one and prioritize just what they want Starfield to be at the end of the day. Because right now, it's going to end up fading into irrelevance as I don't even think they know what they can improve on going forward. Though who knows? This game could just be following in No Man's Sky's footsteps and will wait a couple years before revamping their game to actually be what people wanted.